Time to build some shortcuts, and these are seven that I use every day. Some are inspired by you by taking screenshots and automatically texting someone, silencing your iPhone and Apple Watch at the same time, and a bonus advanced shortcut for those of you who travel often, and I created some recent ones to make Apple Podcasts a little more powerful. All right, number one, I had a viewer ask in a comment, can you make a shortcut that takes a screenshot and then automatically text that screenshot to someone specifically? You can absolutely do that. It's a simple two-step shortcut. Let's build from scratch. First action, search for take screenshot. There's not any customizations or anything, just take screenshot and then search for the send message action, and it's automatically gonna send the screenshot to a contact that you choose. If I were to run this shortcut right now by pressing the play button, it takes the screenshot and automatically texts it to the person. You see, here's a text to myself with that screenshot. Now, if you don't even wanna confirm that text message to be sent, you can toggle off the show and run. Now it's gonna take the screenshot and automatically text it without you having to confirm anything. And the nice thing is when you run it as a shortcut, it won't keep saving those screenshots to your photos. All right, number two, I use this one all the time, but I can't take credit for it. This is from Federico Vitici over at Mac Stories. He created this whole shortcut to basically put any screenshots you take in frames. I'll put a link down in the description to download this one specifically. But when you run this shortcut, you can choose screenshots from your camera roll. You can even choose multiple. You hit done and it's automatically gonna put the device frame around the screenshot. It can choose if you wanna save it to photos, copy the image, or just preview it. And I'll show you the preview here in quick look. And what it does is puts the device frame around the screenshot. So it looks like you took a picture of the device. This works for all your Apple devices, iPhone, iPad, Mac, and it looks way better than just sharing the rectangle screenshot. Shortcut number three, someone asked if you can silence your iPhone and Apple Watch at the same time. You can absolutely do this and you can even create it as a toggle. So the first action I'm gonna search for is silent and Toolbox Pro puts more actions into the Shortcuts app. I can choose is silent mode on. This is going to be the first step in the shortcut. I'm gonna use the built-in scripting if statement. Now, when you add the if statement, it's gonna autofill the previous action from Toolbox Pro, but tap the silent mode is on and then change it to name down here. This will make it easier to set up the if statement. Now, if I search for silent, you'll see set silent mode is available in scripting. This might just be iPhone 15 Pro because of the action button change, but the Apple Watch set silent is here as well. I'm gonna drag the set silence mode under the if statement. That's for the iPhone. And then I'm gonna search for the Apple Watch action and put that also in the same if statement, turn it off. Now I don't have to search for these actions again. I'll just tap on the little symbol to the left and tap duplicate. I'm gonna drag that into the otherwise section. Same for the phone silent mode action. And in the otherwise statement, I wanna make these say on. The toolbox action gives you a yes or no answer for silent mode. So I'm gonna physically write yes in that action. Now when I run this shortcut, it's gonna check whether or not silent mode is on or off. And you'll see it actually changed in the dynamic island right there. If I go to the control center, now silence mode is disabled. And even on my watch, you'll see silent mode is now off or it's going to make sound. If I run the same shortcut again, it will check the status and then toggle it to off. Now that it's done running, you see a change in the dynamic island. You see silent mode is on there and silence mode is on the watch as well. Great way to silence both your iPhone and your Apple watch with a single shortcut. All right, shortcut number four, airdrops, probably something you do pretty often. And while there's no actually check airdrop status action, so it can't do a legitimate toggle, we can create a menu option to set airdrop on or off. So starting from scratch, I'm gonna set up a menu. You can just search for the menu action here in shortcuts. We'll do choose from menu. And I'm gonna do three menu options, airdrop on, off, and contacts only. Then under each menu option, I can search for airdrop and I can choose set airdrop receiving. I'll drag this under the airdrop on, and I'll leave that as set to everyone for 10 minutes. Then I can duplicate this action by tapping the symbol, hit duplicate, we'll drag that under airplay off, and I'll tap everyone for 10 minutes and choose off. I'll duplicate it one more time, and here I can set to contacts only. Now when I run the shortcut, it's gonna bring up those menu options. I can choose airdrop on, and now it'll be open to everyone for 10 minutes. If I go to the control center, I can check, there's airdrop on for everyone. Now, if I wanna turn it off quickly, I'll tap airdrop toggle. I can do airdrop off. And now if I check the control center, airdrop is going to be disabled. And I'll do one more time to set it as contacts only, which is how I leave it by default. Number four, I recently thought of this. I don't know why I didn't do it sooner, but Apple Podcast is my default podcast player. I love the design, built-in subscriptions, but you can only set it to skip forward a maximum of 60 seconds. See, if I go to the settings app, go to podcasts, Scroll down and you can see the forward option maxes out at 60 seconds. And if you listen to a lot of podcasts like I do, you know there's a lot of ad breaks longer than 60 seconds. So I created this shortcut called forward two minutes. 
and there's an action built into the device called Seek. I'll search for it down here. If you use Overcast, there's actually built-in actions for that. But for the media, I'll choose Seek right here. And this is the built-in iPhone action, so it will work with whatever media is playing. Now I can tap two time, and you can choose to actually jump to a time stamp, but I'm gonna go forward by, and then I can choose how many seconds I want it to skip forward. So if I want a longer skip forward time, let's say two minutes, I'm gonna choose 120 seconds on iPhone. You can also apply the Seek action to any HomePod or AirPlay 2 device that you have in your home. You can also set up a menu so you choose which device to skip on. You can make it really advanced. But I just wanna skip forward two minutes on my iPhone whenever I run the shortcut. Then you can make this really convenient by doing a back tap or the action button. I'll actually go to my action button settings, under shortcut, I'll search for two minutes. And now when I tap the action button, it's gonna skip forward two minutes. Now, if I go to my Apple Podcasts app, or even if it's just playing in the background, I'll start playing it. Not that you would ever skip two minutes in the Primary Technology Podcast, subscribe at the links below. And you'll see if I do the action button, it skips forward two minutes right there. Hit it again, skips forward another two minutes. Now I can customize how far to skip forward whenever I'm listening to Apple Podcasts or in any podcast app. Number six, one of my favorite features from the Pocket Cast app was the ability to skip an intro individually per show. Now this is gonna be a little cumbersome to do it for multiple shows, but it's possible. I'm actually gonna choose a menu and I'm gonna create this shortcut for the podcasts that have the longest intros. I'll just create two here for the Vergecast and Omnibus. So these are two menu options and now we have to put some actions in there. Under the Vergecast, I'm gonna put a plate. This is an Apple Podcast action. You can just search for podcasts, and here, play podcast is the action you want. I'll save this one for that action, but I'm gonna choose play, and here you can choose one of the podcasts already in your library. I'll choose the Verge cast. Then I'm gonna add a wait command because sometimes the podcast takes a second to play. Maybe it's streaming instead of downloaded. I put wait two seconds. You might need to adjust that depending on how quickly it loads. And then I'm gonna add our seek action like we did in the previous shortcut. And you can choose how long that intro might be. I'm gonna put two minutes. So now when I run this shortcut, I choose one of my podcasts, it starts playing it, and after two seconds, it's going to skip forward by two minutes. This way, I don't need to hear the intro. So let's test this out. I can see the latest episode of the Vergecast here. I haven't started playing it, so if I were to press play, it would start from the very beginning. And if I run this shortcut, I'm gonna see the menu pop up. I'll choose Vergecast. It's there in the dynamic island. And after just a couple seconds, you see it already skipped forward two minutes. And this is creating a skip intro feature for any show you have in Apple Podcasts. By the way, this action play podcast will just play the latest episode of that show. So if you have a few episodes in the backlog, it's not gonna play that older episode. Now you can choose a different action. For instance, I could do the get episodes of podcast and let's do the same thing. We'll choose the verge cast. And then I'm gonna add an action, choose. And here I'll do choose from list. I'll drag that under the get episodes of the verge cast. And then under that choose from episodes, you have to add one more action. We're gonna do play podcast, and it's going to play that episode that I chose in the previous menu item. Then it's gonna wait two seconds and skip forward by two minutes. So if I hit play, I choose Vergecast. You'll see the list of episodes in reverse chronological order, the newest one at the bottom. I'll choose the second from newest. Now it'll start playing that episode, and after two seconds, it's going to skip forward two minutes. And I know it's small, but you can see down there at the bottom, it successfully skipped the intro. All right, number seven on daily shortcuts, and then I'll get into a special travel one. This is for feeding the snake. Yes, we have a snake, and because it doesn't eat every day, it's hard to remember the last time it actually ate. So this is a pretty advanced shortcut. I'll leave a link down in the description if you wanna just download it. But I have two options here. The choose from menu is log a snake feeding, so we actually fed it, and gives me the date of the last feeding. If I scroll down, it'll get the current date to log it, and then I'm using the application data jar, which I'm gonna use in the next two shortcuts as well. And here we'll save the current date in one of my custom data jars. I've called it snake feeding. That's all it does. And then the second menu option, last feeding, will get the value from the data jar and show it to me here in Quick Look. So when I run the shortcut, I can choose get last feeding, and it's just gonna show me the date and time of that last feeding logged. If I go to the data jar app, this is where you can create custom jars that hold data. And here in my snake feeding jar, I just have the date being kept in one index. Now you don't have to do a lot actually in the data jar app. Shortcuts can manage it all for you. When you add a data jar action, you can say add date, which was the previous action. You can choose where in the jar you want it. 
I put it at the beginning or the top of the list. So that's the next date that will be pulled. And then all you have to do is type the name of the jar that you created in the data jar app right here in the shortcut. So to do that, you would just hit the plus button in the data jar app. Here in the data jar app, you could just add a value. We'll call this dog feeding. And now if I do dog feeding as the text in the shortcut, it's gonna log the information, or in this case, the current date to that data jar. And then when I get the value, I can just type that data jar title in here and it will show me the value in Quick Look. So those are seven shortcuts I use pretty much daily. And these last two, these were asked for by a viewer via email, a frequent traveler, he's actually a pilot, and he stays in a lot of hotels. And one of the challenges is remembering the hotel number you're currently staying in. So I set up two shortcuts for when he's checking into a hotel and to check his hotel room number. This shortcut, you see it asks for a number, and then it's gonna save that hotel room number to data jar. Not only that, it also gets his current location. So when you run the shortcut, it'll get the address. And then I have another data jar list that'll set the hotel address to that location. So you can see in data jar, one that logs the room number here, the hotel room, and one called hotel address. So you run that shortcut when you're checking into your hotel. And then the second shortcut will pull that information. And this will show you your current hotel room number in quick look. And I can even add another action to get directions to the hotel address. So if I look at the data jar actions, the two main ones I'm using are set value and get value. Because I wanna get the hotel address, maybe directions, I'm gonna choose get value. And here's where I type my data jar name. So I'm gonna get hotel address. And now I'll search for an action like get directions. And maybe you're walking around the hotel. So I'm gonna do open walking directions from current location to the value from data jar, which is the hotel address using Apple Maps. And I'm actually gonna add a wait command here because I want a few seconds to see my hotel room number. Let's do four seconds. And now when I run this shortcut, it's gonna show me my current hotel room number in a notification. Wait a few seconds, so I have time to read it. And then it's gonna open directions back to the hotel address via walking. And again, I can change it to driving if I want to, but in one shortcut, I'm reminded of my hotel room number and I get directions back to the hotel. I'll put links to these two shortcuts so you can download it in the video description. Just remember you need to install the Data Jar app in order for these to run, and you'll need to create two jars called hotel room and hotel address for it to save your location. So those are seven shortcuts I use daily and some great suggestions from you. If you have more questions or suggestions for shortcuts, leave them in the comments below. I love building the ones that you're asking for and find useful, and you have some great ideas like that hotel one. So leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel before you go, hit that like button, and I'll put a video right up here. If it's your first shortcut video you're seeing, I have an entire playlist walking through Shortcuts 101, seven easy ones to create, all the way through advanced automations. You can check out all those videos right here. And if you're interested in Apple Vision Pro, like whether or not you should buy it, I have a video on that right up here. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.